This video is sponsored by LastPass. Oh, look at this wiring harness, Mike. This is, this is <laughs> more complex than a car. Today, we're at the Home Pin Factory. Mike, thank you for having us. Scotty, welcome. If I understand correctly, this is a really unique factory for China. Is this the only pinball machine factory in China? We are, and in fact, apart from a small place in England that's made 10 machines, we're the only pinball machine factory outside America. Well, let's take a look. I wanna, I wanna dive in and see what you guys are doing. You wanna have a look underneath here? Sure. We released the lockdown bar like okay. so. We would then normally slide the glass out. Yep. We can then grab this, and on, on home pin machines, yep. there's a mechanism underneath here, which we can show you later, that traps the balls so they don't fall out. Well, get the play field to about here, and they start to fall out and smash against all the plastics and break oh. things, and that's not a good look. So no. this is our ball trough here, which has oh, five wow. balls for this particular game, yep. and uh, it's got a, a flap here, and it's got a, a mechanism on the top that traps yep. the balls so yep. they can't get out. Mostly what you can see under here are lamp boards with uh, yep. LEDs on the other side yep. to illuminate various places on the play field. Oh, there's control boards here um, oh. and here and uh, flipper control boards on the top yeah. and various other small boards and you might notice something about these boards they're all made with through hole parts it's done that way because I'm firmly of the belief that you should be able to repair your own machine. And uh, on the subject of how many lots of boards, you said there are lots of boards, that's in our, our service manual that comes with every machine, is a list of the printed circuit boards in, in the machine. I, I haven't counted it, but it's 50-ish, it's something like that. Wow. You can see exactly, if we go to this one here, we know that switch 47 is the under ramp top side. I'd like to thank LastPass for sponsoring this video. I've been using LastPass for over four years now to keep track of hundreds of passwords and credit card details and other sensitive info, not just for my personal life, but also for strange parts. I'll admit, I used to use the same handful of passwords across every site that I had an account on. And this was a real problem because if, if someone breaks in and gets my password for one site, they could log in as me on potentially hundreds of other sites. Now that I'm using LastPass, I can assign a completely random password to each site I have an account on or each app I have an account on and LastPass stores all of those passwords in its encrypted online vault that I just have to remember one master password for. And then when I want to go log in, I use the Chrome plugin or I use the iOS app to automatically fill in all of the account login details for me automatically. Most of the time, I don't really think about it very much. I just checked and I have over 600 different sets of account details stored in LastPass. It helps keep me sane. I don't have to worry about writing down passwords or having trouble remembering them. Most of the time, honestly, I don't even really think about it anymore. Click on the link below to find out more about LastPass. I want to thank them again for sponsoring this video. Now back to the pinball factory. If we come over here, this is some new playfield ready to be assembled on the bench here. Um, if we turn that over. Oh, that's a to... super cool jig, Mike. We can go to there and we can immediately see the worker can see and they've got their boxes of screws here, all different sizes, and they can see which size screw needs to go into which hole. There's a reference yeah. there and there's also a printed reference here which it's a little bit easier to follow for some of them. And they can start the screw and then they actually put a little bit of Loctite on that and then screw it in. And, and that's done. And so why China? Uh, the cost of parts, the cost and availability of the skilled labour to make dies, to make plastic tooling, to, to get all these bits and pieces to bring it all together is, yeah. is cost effective here. It's not a wages thing like some people seem to yeah. think, it's not, it's not that, it's not, um, it's not a building thing. Actually the rental here is far more expensive than I could rent an equivalent place in Australia. For. Yeah, we're talking about how your um, rent has gone up. It's ridiculous. Yeah. And this is, this is the story that I keep hearing from people doing manufacturing in China. It's not about cheap labour anymore, no. it's about access to supply chain and no, access to skilled labor. And the labor is skilled, it's more yeah. skilled and therefore it's more expensive. Why I don't not? know a ton about pinball machines, but I've brought Stuart with me, who's behind the camera right now. Yeah. You have a few machines back yeah, home, is that right? I've, on my 30th birthday, I realized I was old enough to go ahead and buy. Long story short, I bought two the first time and then I filled a light industrial unit. <laughs> <laughs> it seems to me like just the, the amount of different things that go on in here, it just makes it super interesting. So what's this machine? Well, here. that's a good question. This is actually a getaway. And it's a genuine getaway, yeah. a Williams getaway. It's a 20 something year old machine. We had a great deal of difficulty getting this machine, but we've got one and uh, we built the cabinet. We just brought all the bits and pieces, the play field and every mechanism and all the boards and everything for this machine. This machine serves as our test 
to, to uh, check okay, these boards yeah. when we build them that mm -hmm. the boards actually work before we ship them out. Its main purpose originally was the Chinese staff have never had any exposure to pinball machine because pinball's never been big in China. The satisfying thing for me was after I got it working and ironed out most of the bugs, the staff would stay back after work playing this machine and I was quite taken by that because they got it. You know, people said Chinese don't know what pinball is, that's not true. They got it, they understood it, they knew what was going on and they liked it, that's what's more important. They liked it because it was different. But then when we started to build Thunderbirds, they would come back and reference this machine and start, and I'd have to say time and again, no, 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 we are not building this. We're building our own version of this, and yes, it is like this, but it is not exactly this. So Mike, where is this? What, where are we now? Dongguan. Dongguan? Yeah. And, but what is, the, this is your other factory? This is the cabinet factory. And why do you have a separate factory? Well, the rules in Shenzhen are changing, and we are no longer able to cut wood or paint. We've had to move all of that activity across the border, across the border three kilometers Shenzhen, away. exactly three kilometers door to door but it smells of wood and epoxy in here uh, wood and solvents well we glue uh, we glue and screw all of our cabinets together yeah so oh these are you beautiful see, you can see they're made from 18 mil yeah plywood very high grade plywood and we glue and screw the joints i built this gantry when we first moved in here for the painting area and this will hold up to nine cabinets basically what we can do here is we can release that and bring it along and then we can roll it into the paint room yeah like so and paint away and in here we've got a, the standard water curtain and vacuum that vacuums the air out so that it draws all of the overspray out i'm actually a little bit surprised at how simple this site like in terms of the machines that you have you yes. have like you know standard. A, a standard table saw yeah. Yeah. standard belt cool. sander i mean yeah. it's this is a very very basic uh, carpentry shop. It's just a, a box. cabinet shop. It's yeah. just a box. Yeah. You know, it could yeah. be a packing box. It's yeah. just a, a simple box. It's a very accurately made box yeah. to within a millimeter or so. We're going into the electronics assembly room now. Yeah. Uh, this is where the girls put the components into the boards, mostly through hole. There's a few surface mount parts yeah. that we use, and uh, we've got Hong here putting some resistors into. Uh, She's stuffing boards, 20, as it's called. H H20s, which are um, the Tracy Island control board. You're stuffing by hand, obviously, because yes. it's through hole. Sure, so and we're, we're making very machine. small quantities. She's yeah. only, she's making like uh, about 40, 50 boards there. Yeah. Not, not yeah. many. And then you're hand soldering? Yes. Okay. Which is super rare. Like you don't, well, well I think you guys are the only Chinese factory <laughs> that I've we, seen that's doing. We actually have solder baths downstairs. And when yeah. we do a, a slightly bigger run, if we're going to make a hundred, we'll use the solder bath. Okay. But okay. Uh, usually they do a better job hand soldering it than, sure. than the solder bath. Yeah. This is our R and D and the general office area. Um, the bench in the middle here's got oh a bit God. of everything on it. A jig here for um, checking on power supplies. Whoa. This is a power supply area. Yeah. So we've got assembled power supply boards here yep. that get put onto this jig here and we check them all and make sure they're right. Here's a test bench here where I'm working on an audio board here at the same time as a main board. Folded. Like your test switches here, yeah. left, right. Like <laughs> yeah. Yep. Well, that works. Yeah. Enter. Yeah. Um, you there's a mechanical bench here where we, we, if we have any problems mechanically with our mechanisms, these have come up for. Uh, for some minor problem and they're here being adjusted and we're working out if there's something we need to change in the mechanism or something maybe we've got to address. Down here a little bit further is, is Tan's bench where uh, he takes my drawings. I generally do the initial drawing and, and the concepting of things and he will use our laser machines down in the, in the floor to, to cut some plastic parts on the laser machine and build up the, the mechanism that I've designed yeah. and he's drawn and uh, we can then see if it all is going to work if yeah. we need to adjust something before we go to the trouble of having laser cut metal parts. Yep. Tan does all the engineering drawings and gets them ready and, and uh, yeah. sends them WeChat for the, uh, to the laser factory and then yeah. we go down in the afternoon and pick up the finished ready to go product. Yeah, sometimes even like within a day or two we can, we can go from, from this prototype here, we can go to having a metal finished one like, like the one we looked at earlier, like this one here. Yeah. Um, you know, because we can have a sample made so quickly. Well, it looks like you guys are having a ton of fun here. Like, I, it, this just seems, uh, yeah, to me, as someone who loves to tinker, like, oh man, I wish I, I wish I <laughs> had a place like this, yeah. So, well, we've got switch parts here. Yeah. We've got pop bumper parts here. Whoa. Pop bumper yokes. Yeah. There's all sorts of metal parts here, some turned metal parts for plungers, bottom of plungers. And are you making these? No, we have these made yeah. outside. These are CNC'd outside. Yeah. I was a pinball machine technician for, for 30 plus years in Australia. And 
even with that experience, I still underestimated just how much work is involved in making each and every single part. And, and so are you buying any parts off the shelf from pinball parts manufacturers? There is one part in our machine only, one part oh. that we bring in. It seems like a lot of these parts are custom made by a sort of generic CNC yes, factory yes, or whatever, whatever the process small is. Gener most small yeah. CNC places, just one-man operations, are perfectly yeah. capable of making things like this. Yeah. This is a pin board. This is where we take the raw wire from our wire rack here and turn it into a wiring harness, or the start of a wiring harness anyway. This is engineered so that we know exactly where each piece of yeah, where each plug has to end up and yeah. these markers tell us which plug is what. So this all gets assembled on here. You sort yeah. of hang this on all the... Yes. It gets put See, onto here and, and it will... Yeah, the labels are all shown and we're doing this very oh. roughly, but they know which plug has to go on the end of each, yep. of each one. And by the way, we spoke about the one part that we buy in. The one, one part that is an existing pinball machine part. Yeah. Can you spot it? I think I'm gonna ask Stuart that question. Time's up. <laughs> uh, time is up. Is it not? It's not that, is it's it? It's that cap. This cap. Why? Because we ran out of time to make the, the mold ourselves, basically, and um, they're available for about 80 cents from a pinball seller. We may make it in the future, but for 79, 80 cents each, it's at the moment not worth our while. We just buy them 100 mm. at a time. There you go, the one part. Fair, fair but enough. everything else is made here. Mike just said that if we didn't play pinball, we wouldn't be allowed to leave. I was hoping we would get to play pinball, so. Okay, Thunderbirds is a mission-based game. Thunderbirds is actually international rescue. They go about their business and around the world rescuing people. So basically we have six missions you have to go on. One of those missions is FAB, which is around here. FAB is the, the car in Thunderbirds. But uh, when we hit that target, if you feel the machine, you can feel the shaker motor kick in when we hit that. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, it's got some good rumble to it. And it shakes the machine. Just give you a bit of feedback. Okay. And I think we get to take a ride. All of these cartoons and things are all related to Thunderbirds. So people who know Thunderbirds will appreciate the effort that we've gone to to provide the right artwork and the right DMD things. Okay, end of mission. And the FAB1 light comes on, which shows we've completed that that mission. We've got other missions as the hood over here, the swinging target you can see moving here, yeah. is the hood. He's the bad guy in the Thunderbirds and he's he's the guy that's always ducking and weaving and hiding and if you feel the machine now when we when we get this. Oh yeah, okay. It's so really, you can like, really, this won't show up on camera but but you can sort uh, of feel it the, the it's, and it's a deep rumble, it's a very satisfying deep shake. The next thing that's unique to, to Thunderbird 2 with its ramp. You hit one of the targets underneath and the ramp lowers slowly the same as it does in the Thunderbirds movie. So Mike, we've been seeing how this is made all afternoon. I think it's finally time for me to give it a shot and try and play it here. I can't believe you've held off this long. <laughs> well, I've been, it's, it's been taking a lot, of, a lot of motivation to not just jump in and start playing. How do, I, how do I fire this up? It's on free play, so press the flashing the button on the front. The ball shoots out. All right, Away and you I go. think I know how this works. No expert. So that's the beauty of this game, you don't need to be an expert. It's for beginners as well as seasoned players. Ah, Straight over the right. ramp immediately, see? Pretty good at getting it up there. You are. Getting up the ramp. That's a pretty hard shot, actually. Is it? No! Oh! Okay. <laughs> this go. is pretty cool. One. Mike, thanks you so much for having us today. Uh, this is super cool. You're um, welcome. Hope you had a good day. Absolutely, absolutely. I enjoyed playing the machine and I enjoyed getting to see all of the nitty gritty about how it's made, as well as to hear your story of all of the things that you've had to figure out mm. in order to do this and to do it here in China. Mm. Uh, it's really impressive. I, I guess I one of the things that I was really amazed by is how many parts go into this. Yes. But not only how many parts, but how many of them you're making yourself. So where can people find out more about you and your machines? That's simple. They can go to homepin.com where there's plenty of links to agents that will be in there area regardless awesome. of where they are in the world awesome go check it out we'll put it in the description as well below if you guys enjoyed this video and you want to see more factory videos like it hit that subscribe button down below but for now i'm scotty from strange parts stay tuned for more adventures i'll see you guys next time